blessings everybody I am doing the video today that I said I would do if um, I, I asked a question on my Facebook page what well, if you if you and I had some time together and, and we could you know do one-on-one -on -one and you had one crystal question that was just burning and you really wanted to ask what was it and um, we kind of did a poll and I got the two most popular ones and um, I said I would do a blog post on one and do a video on the other. So I did the blog post. Um, it's actually going to be coming out, or I think it came out already <laughs> last week. And this is the video. And actually, this was the most popular question. And the question was, um, how do you know when you should cleanse your crystals or how often should you cleanse your crystals? And I get this question asked a lot. Um, or asked in various ways with just like a little twist to it. Um, so here's the deal. And I've said this in lots of different ways in different formats. I have different videos that I'll probably link to somewhere around here um, once I come up to that particular point. But um, so I don't think crystals need to be cleansed as often as people would like us to believe or as often as people would like to do it is probably the more accurate way of saying it. And I say cleanse because I don't feel like a crystal can get dirty, and physically dirty, yes, of course, but I don't feel like a crystal can get like really bogged down with a bunch of our junk like we can. Um, because of their geometric perfection and their atomic structure, they resist entropy. So if you remember your physics class at all, uh, you'll know that entropy is the disorganization in systems. And they tend to resist that because of their geometric perfection in their atomic structure. That being said, doesn't mean that they can't uh, get dissonant at all, just like a, an instrument. Those of you that are musicians, you know you need to retune them after they've been played and played and played. I feel it's the same thing with crystals. If they are used like workhorses, if they're used a lot, like for instance, my Big Mama Rose Quartz, I use her in a um, love crystal grid and I open that up to others and people send me messages and things uh, that I, I do that for free, you know, and I, I since I'm doing the work, every day i would like to try to spread that love out and that compassion out and that energy out to other beings that might be in need as well and this is something that any of you anybody can do this i mean if you're going to be working on the grid anyway for yourself you might as well send it out to other people that are looking for those energies also but doing that i feel you know may pull more energy or require a little bit more from big mama quartz so rose quartz so i will probably retune that quartz the dominant oscillatory rate might need some retuning like a guitar that's played every night in a house band is going to be needing to be retuned more often than a, a guitar that's used once a month um, Although a guitar that's used once a month also needs retuning every now and again, just because the, the strings aren't being played on a regular basis. So you can look at it both ways. But crystals maintain their dominant oscillator rate even better than an instrument because of that atomic structure. So their tendency is to hold their dominant oscillator rate, or for you physics students out there, their base resonant frequency. Okay, so their tendency is to hold that and maintain it. I feel like there's only, there's very few things that really knock it way out. And even if something knocks it way out, they're going to come back to their home frequency all on their own. They don't need us. They do not need us to bring them back. Uh, and that being said, I also feel like they don't need us to charge them with an, a purpose. They have their purpose. It's embedded in their vibrational frequency, okay? You can program crystals. That can be done. It's not easy for us to do. It's much easier for the crystal to have its own intent, its own program. So the whole thing about charging, I just, for myself, boom, I don't use it. So I'm not saying that other people who do use it are wrong or that if you use it and it's working great that it's wrong, please, please know that I don't feel any of these things are wrong if you're doing them. It's just something that I don't resonate with. 
So if you're going to ask me how to charge a crystal, I don't hold to that any longer. I used to, but I don't, I don't do that any longer. So let's get back on topic here. So I made a couple notes to make sure. All right. So how often do you cleanse your crystals and when do you know that you need to cleanse them? Um, so uh, as I said, I don't think you need to do it as often as some feel that it's necessary. When you first get your crystals, you want to do stuff with them. So it's a fun thing to do. I do like to put the crystals that I've been using as a workhorse in full moon energy from time to time. I don't do it every single full moon. I'll do it, you know, every once in a while. Or if there's like an important celestial event going on I that I would like to absorb the energies from, like a lunar eclipse. I feel that's a really nice energy to uh, help give my crystals a nice boost. I love lunar eclipse energy. Um, sun energy is great. Just be careful that you don't put highly pigmented stones. Anything with a nice deep color will fade, especially if it's quartz. So you don't want to leave it in the sun for too long. But you know, 15 minutes, that's okay. It won't fade it. It won't, if you do it 15 minutes every day, it will. But uh, just for a nice boost of energy, um, you know, that would be fine. Also on uh, uh, solar, I'm sorry, solstices and equinoxes. Those are nice days to get really good energy because it's very balanced energy. That's balanced celestial energy. So I like the energy boost from those uh, certain cosmic events. So that using the calendar there, using the cosmos as my guide and not, not the Gregorian calendar, okay? I don't buy into man-made calendar. I buy into cosmos-made calendar. <laughs> I tend to have like this aversion towards man-made things, don't I? Um, but I just feel like the universe knows better, so I'm going to go with that. Um, those kinds of energies, I do like to get the absorption in. I don't feel like those are cleansing the crystal, but more so giving it a boost of energy. All right, so those are types of events that I would like to use to retune my crystals. Um, some of you, not all of you, but some of you are gifted with the clear kinesthetic, meaning you can feel the energies from your crystals and you can feel when they're low and you can feel when they're nice and high. And so maybe again, a crystal that's been used a lot, maybe in crystal healings on a daily basis for healing people, several people a day or several people throughout the week. Um, you may feel that the energy is low in that crystal and could use a nice retuning. So that would be a good time to do that if you feel that. If you're not gifted with that, many of us aren't, um, using a pendulum. Take your crystals and I teach my students you can line them up on a table uh, and use your pendulum over each crystal to see if it needs a retuning and give a specific question. You want to ask the question in your mind. Would you like a retuning under the moon? And if you, and then you also need to know what your yes or no is in your pendulum. That's a different video. Um, so find out your yes or no, and then you ask using your pendulum. That's an easy, easy way. You can also use dowsing rods, but you're going to need more room because the dowsing rods need room to, to do this little motion here. Uh, you can also ask your crystals intuitively. Um, if you have that bond, that relationship with your crystals, if you're meditating with your crystals, you can ask during a meditation, see if you get a sense of that. Or you can just go down the table, just like we talked about doing with the pendulum or with the dowsing rods. You can do the same thing, just using your intuition, just sitting in front of the crystal and asking it and seeing if you get any kind of hit regarding whether it would like a retuning at that time or not. Um, the other time that I would definitely, definitely do some kind of retuning is if there's been any kind of traumatic event. If you broke the crystal, dropped it and chipped it, um, it's been through some kind of high amplitude energy. And I've talked about that in some of my cleansing, uh, other cleansing videos and using energy to retune your crystal. Uh, when I say high amplitude, that means that the energy is higher than the crystals. Now that's hard to do. Our energy being higher than the crystals, higher frequency than the crystals, because again, we don't have that perfection. We do have some liquid crystals running through our bodies, making up a lot of our bodies. Um, all of our cell membranes are liquid crystal, but we are not entirely crystalline. That's why we don't look like crystals. 
Um, but crystals are obviously entirely, <laughs> entirely crystalline. So they have an inherently um, more stable, more high amplitude energy. So it's harder to get knocked out. But if somebody comes in, you know, it can be in a positive way or in a negative way, but very high amplitude. And it's not easy to ignore someone who has that high amplitude energy. It overtakes everything in the room. When they leave, that energy lingers, whether they're really high on life and positive and just whoa, or they're just really angry or really sad and upset. You're going to feel that energy even lingering after they're gone. Um, so say you used a crystal to work on someone like that, or they touched the crystal, or they just came in the vicinity in the environment of the crystal, and you feel like everything just really needs a good uh, cleansing, and there's that word again, um, then do it. If, especially if you're getting a feeling that your crystal needs it, then do it. Because you know what? It's not going to hurt the crystal. It cannot right, hurt everybody. I hope that uh, answered your question. And of course, I'll always be around with more videos to come. So make sure you subscribe up here somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Namaste, everybody. Bye.